Welcome to European Railway, the television magazine for the continental enthusiast. The city of Köln is a strategic location for railways in the western part of the country. Many routes radiate out of the city and there is a major rail freight yard at Grimberg, which attracts considerable levels of traffic. To the west and east of the city there are avoiding lines that keep the freight movements away from the busy congested main station. One of the routes, the line on the western side, is popular with enthusiasts as it provides for plenty of action, not just from freight but also passenger services. Our first scene shows Dispalok Hire Loco number 182568 on a container train operated by Wiener Local Barman Cargo Limited. Our visit was made on a Saturday morning and freight activity was around 12 per hour, with around 8 passenger services also seen. You can expect a good variety of locomotive types here. This is 155095 on a short freight for nearby Grenberg Yard.
the line also sees its fair share of diesel locomotives, not only from the national operator, as seen here, but also private companies' locos. Here, DB Schenker's 225051 and 117 haul dead electric number 185310 in a northbound direction. Diesel locomotives also appear on passenger turns. Here 218216 is about to restart this train bound for Trier. Private operator HGK is based around Köln and its fleet of locomotives are regular sites on this line. Here type DE1002 numbers DE73 and 86 trundle south. The station is situated over the Luxemburger Strasse, which is also the route of local tramline number 18.
the Class 140s are now relatively rare, being one of the few remaining classes left over from the 1960s standard locomotive designs. Here 14169 gains useful employment on this southbound automotive train. Finally, two class 151s, number 151111 and 169, head this southbound train of iron ore hoppers bound for Dillingham Steelworks. We made a brief visit to this area in issue 28 and discovered that it is an interesting rural railway with a variety of operations to be found. We made a return visit to sample more of the activity. The main focal point for operations is at the junction town at Bariva on the line between Mishkolts and Slovakia as well as the busy branch down to Ujd. Running through typical rural scenery is M62 number 223 
on a freight from Mishkoltz to Bariva. The same loco is seen on the branch to Ujd with a train of steel wire. Other services are operated by class 6112 diesel rail cars, such as seen here. The city of Ujd has a population, which is mainly made up of gypsies, of around 40,000 people and generates a good amount of passenger traffic, much of it still operated by locomotive and coach formations.
Being right next to the border, the area sees Slovakian diesels on freight transfers. Unsilenced 751149 prepares for its next turn of duty. Also to be seen on freight traffic are privately operated M62s. Just east of the steelworks at centre is blue liveried M62-003. The late afternoon sun provides a superb backdrop for this southbound departure. Finally, after a loco failure, this class M62 has been placed at the front of this passenger service for Mischgolz. With a fairly regular amount of freight along this route, the area is well worth a visit, especially if you are interested in the more traditional type of Hungarian freight and passenger workings. In the last edition of European Railway, we focused on the gradual demise of the BB16500 locomotives around the Lille area in northern France. The class were also clinging to life on commuter services around Strasbourg, working to Saverne and Mulhouse. In this section, we look at some of the last remaining examples in traffic, and we also call into the junction town at Longuillon. We begin just to the south of Colmar at the small town of Raufach, as BB 16736 slows with the 621 from Mulhouse to Colmar.
The Strasbourg 16500s were all withdrawn from traffic on 15th of July. Rushing through Benfeld on the same day is Strasbourg-based 15023. <laughs> BB 16740 is in charge of the 0756 Strasbourg to Mulhouse service. Just three locomotives were diagrammed for such services each day. Just north of Benfeld is 15018 as it heads north powering the 718 from Basel to Nancy. Finally, BB25590 is powering the 0817 from Celestat. These ex Marseille based machines were drafted in to replace the remaining BB16500s. We now move north to the junction town at Longuillon, which is situated on the main line between northeastern France and Lille. Our first scene shows dual voltage number 27081 heading a southbound slab train from Dunkirk. Local trains to Longwy are generally in the hands of these Z11500 two-car units.
Belgian locomotives also appear here on freight turns off the Longwy line. Here 1340 and 1342 head a set of loaded coal hoppers south at just after half past six in the evening. Since transferred to Paris for working services on the Normandy line, number 15001 departs with the 1736 from Nancy to Longwy. This is our first look at the railways of Slovenia as we travel to the junction town of Pragersko, which is situated just to the south of the second largest city in the country, Maribor. The main line linking Ljubljana with Maribor passes through the town, where the single track non electrified route from Patoi joins this route. We take a look at activity on the morning of 24th of June 2009. Intercity services are operated by Class SZ664 diesels, built under licence from General Motors. These locomotives are popular with enthusiasts from all over Europe as a result of their loud engines. Here we see 664114 with the 0505 from Hodosh. At the eastern end of the triangle on the route to Patoi, this German designed class 814 unit is forming the 0700 from Maribor to Morska Sobota. Class 643 diesels are based on the French BB63400. This one is seen with this early morning trip bound for Patoi. Services along this route were generally hourly in each direction, with one freight just every two or three hours.
We are now just south of the station platforms on the electrified route down from Maribor. Class 312, number 107, a type based on the German Class 642, heads a stopping service from Maribor to Zidani Most. Following along behind was 363006 on a container train bound for the port of Koper. The influence of foreign railway manufacturers is quite noticeable, such as in this view of an Italian-designed Class 310 Pendolino unit arriving with a service for Maribor. Built by Marcotha in Spain in the early 1970s, the Class 644 are generally used for freight throughout the country. Here, 644018, the last of the class, heads north towards Maribor. Three four two zero four seven arrives with the O eight forty from Ljubljana to Budapest. This service will change engines here for a class six six four diesel forward to Hudosh.
back to the eastern side of the town now on the line from Potoy as class 644005 arrives light engine. In this section we take a look at activity on diesel only lines in the south of the country, the first around Lindau, the second just to the south of Ulm, and lastly the main line north of the town of Hof. We begin in the very south at Lindau, which is situated on the shores of the Bodensee. Here the non-electrified line from Kempton joins the electrified Austrian OBB line from Bregenz, for the last half kilometre into the town's terminus station. Our first scene shows Arriva Trains number 223065 arriving with a local service from Mimingen. Class 218 diesels are still regular performers here, with 218461 seen here with the 0658 from Kempton. Austrian 1116090 is seen arriving with a service from Bregenz. In the opposite direction is a Montafoner Bahn Swiss designed RPZ unit on a local service for Blue Dens. Finally, 218461 brings up the rear of this train, bound for Augsburg.
We now move to Laubheim West, just to the south of Ulm, as 218409 and 443 depart for Friedrichshafen. Just to the south of the station, diminutive looking 650008 is working the 1301 from Laubheimstadt to Biberach. Two one eight two three four leads another classmate on the 0910 from Innsbruck to Munster into city service. Finally, in the opposite direction, 218427 powers south on its way to Friedrichshafen. We now move to just north of Hoof, as a class 612 crosses the short viaduct over the Saale River with a service for Dresden. A service to Falkenstein follows, formed of a Siemens Regio Sprinter diesel unit. Train number 51685, the 0510 departure from Reichenbach to Nuremberg, passes by headed by a class 232.
233043 is seen in the opposite direction with train 51736 from Nuremberg to Engelsdorf. We are now close to Schoenberg station as this ER20 diesel is seen on a freight for Kunitz Steelworks near Saarfeld. This is train 51772 from Nuremberg to Berlin and is unusual in having a class 185 electric being dragged behind the class 232. Finally, we are at Schoenberg as this pair of Class 612 units lean into the curve. We travel to Switzerland now as we sample the narrow gauge network known as the Zentralbahn which until 2005 was previously called the Brunigbahn. The route is part of a network of lines that link Interlaken with Luzerne via Meiringen. Most of the lines were constructed in the late 1800s or early 1900s, just before the start of the First World War. It wasn't until 1941 that electrification of the network was completed. We paid a visit to the line on 30th of June 2009, to sample the everyday traffic and the wonderful scenery to be had in this part of the country. We begin on the shores of Lake Brienza Sea at Brienz. This is also the junction with the steam operated rack railway known as the Rothorn Barn. A class 101 electric arrives with a golden pass service for Luzerne. After a short stop, the train is soon on its way again to Meiringen.
The Rotorn barn operates out of a different station than the Zentral barn, although both stations are no more than about 20 metres apart. The line is mostly steam operated, apart from the odd service which is diesel hauled. These two trains are about to depart for the summit. The line mainly caters for tourists. It was originally opened in June 1892, but quickly experienced financial problems and services were suspended in August 1914, at the start of World War I. The line remained closed until 1931, when it was reopened on 13th of June that year. Locomotive number 16, seen on the first train, dates from 1992, whilst number 7, powering the second departure, dates from 1936.
The Zentralbahn was created on 1st of January 2005, following the merger of the LSE and Brunigbahn railways, and rolling stock has gradually received the railway's new colours. Before the merger took place, Stadler and ABB delivered new Spatz Class 130 electric units, which are now used on the lowland sections between Luzerne and Stans and Giswil, as well as seen here on services between Meiringen and Interlaken. We now move to Maringen as 101964 heads a Golden Pass service for Interlaken. Although the line is narrow gauge, trains can reach anything up to 100 km per hour and some of the valley floor sections. Holding up the traffic in this scene is 101962 as it slows for the station stop at Meiringen.
This church is around 110 years old, the old one having been swept away when the lake flooded. The village is surrounded on three sides by steep sides and forestation, and only the northern side allows easy access for transportation routes. Dropping down the rack section is 101 966. Filming freight workings along this line is difficult. Luckily, on the day we were there, 101963 is seen heading a short northbound ballast working. We are now at Alpnachstad, as this class 130 formation heads a service from Luzerne to Gisville. The station is also adjacent to the world's steepest rack railway, known as the Pillar Toothbahn. This 800mm gauge railway has a gradient of over 48% over its 4.6km length. Opened on 4th of June 1889, the line travels up to Pillar Toothbahn station, which lies at an altitude of 2,073 metres above sea level. The goods shed here still houses some of the line's historic freight stock, however, the tracks have now been disconnected from the main running lines. Finally, we move back to the village of Lungern, 
as 101962 makes its way up the valley with a service from Luzerne. We would like to thank you for watching this edition of European Railway.